Now, the question is, can we get the partial derivative of a partial derivative? So, similar with the usual derivatives, the answer is yes, as long as the expression is differentiable with respect to the given variable. So, here are our notations for second-order partial derivatives. So, for these two equations, this is the partial derivatives of dz dx, and for the last two equations, that is the partial derivative of the partial derivative of z with respect to y. Now, extending this second order partial derivative into higher order partial derivative, so we can actually differentiate this into fourth, fifth, so on and so forth, but we will just deal with third order partial derivative and you can use the same concept in solving higher order partial derivative. So for this third order, if we are given w equals f of x, y, z, and we are using this notation, so we are first differentiating f with respect to x, then x, then y. So if we are using this notation, x, x, y. The same here, so we are first differentiating f with respect to x, then y, then z. So x, y, and z. For example, if you are asked to find the required higher order partial derivative of the functions for number 1, f of x, y, z to be this one. So we are asked to find d cube f over d z cube. Again, I'm just reading this notation the way it was written but we know that we are referring to the third order partial derivative of f with respect to z so d cube f over dz cube and f y x z so let us first solve this one so the partial derivative of f with respect to z okay, so e to the x is a constant if we are differentiating with respect to z so we can copy that then cosine 1 minus z so that would be negative sine 1 minus z. So remember the chain rule. So the derivative of 1 minus z with respect to z is negative 1. Plus ln x here is a constant. So again, copy. Then the derivative of e to the yz is e to the yz times the derivative of yz by the chain rule. So the derivative of yz with respect to z is just y. Simplifying this expression, we have here, this one. Next, we have to differentiate this again with respect to z. So e to the xy is again a constant. A derivative of sine 1 minus z is cosine 1 minus z times negative 1. Plus, y ln x is a constant and the derivative of e to the yz is e to the yz times y. So simplifying again, we have this expression. So I will leave you the details for third order partial derivative, but the answer should be this one. Negative e raised to xy sine 1 minus z plus y cubed ln x times e to the yz. For this one, f, y, x, z, again, I will leave you to solve for this one, but remember, you need to solve first the partial derivative of f with respect to y, to x, then to z. Also, do not forget the product and the quotient rules. So, here is the answer. For the next number, the function fxy is equal to x cosine xy minus e to the y sine x. So, we are asked to solve for fxy and fyx. Let us start with fxy. So, the partial derivative of f with respect to x, here, as we can see, we have x times cosine xy. So we need to use the product rule here, which says left the right plus right the left. So the left one is x and the right one is cosine xy. So left is x, left the right. So derivative of the right is negative sine xy times y. Plus right the left, so copy the right one times the derivative of x, which is 1. So we can just not write that. For this next expression, e to the y is a constant with respect to x, so we can copy that. Then the derivative of sine x is cosine x. Simplifying, we have this expression. Then we have to differentiate this fx with respect to y. So here, negative xy and sine xy, we need to use the product rule. So again, left, 
the right plus right the left. Now for cosine xy, the derivative of cosine xy with respect to y is negative sine xy times the derivative of xy by the chain rule, so that would be x minus e to the y cosine x. This is because cosine x is a constant and the derivative of e to the y is e to the y. So fxy is equal to this expression. Now for fyx, the partial derivative of f with respect to y is given by, so x is a constant here, so we can copy that. Then the derivative of cosine xy is negative sine xy times x. So here, sine x is a constant and the derivative of e to the y is e to the y. Simplifying, we have this one. Then we have to differentiate this with respect to x. Again, as you can see, we have to use the product rule here. So left, the right. So the derivative of sine xy is cosine xy times y. Since the derivative of xy with respect to x is just y. Left, the right, plus right, the left. So negative 2x minus... So this one, e to the y is a constant and the derivative of sine x is cosine x. So simplifying, we have this one. So as we can see, here fxy is equal to fyx. So the question now is, is that always the case? Is f of xy always equal to fyx? So in this next theorem, if these conditions are satisfied, then we are guaranteed that fxy is equal to fyx. Hello, Math on the Invidure. To check out more lecture videos, click here. And to supplement your learning, don't forget to answer the exercises which you can find in the description box below. Enjoy and stay safe.